This is Dr. Wood with Citadel Civil Engineering. This is Civil 203 Dynamics. And in this lecture, we're discussing very briefly Learning Objective 3.2. Uh, we've talked about work energy already, but in this lecture, we're gonna talk about the concept of conservation of energy. So conservation of energy is, is a true scientific concept. Uh, and in that model, we're saying that we can neither uh, add or destroy energy in a system. We're always going to be getting that energy from someplace. And that's a great idea as long as we're talking about energy holistically. So if we're thinking about all forms of energy, kinetic energy, uh, mechanical energy of various forms, as well as like thermal and chemical and uh, electromagnetic energy. So if we think about it holistically, it's a great idea. Now, the problem is, is that when we think about it in terms of just uh, dynamics, we tend to focus on the mechanical forms of energy. And then conservation of energy doesn't work quite as well for us when the work energy concepts that we've already talked about uh, do everything we need to do, them to do. Now, this is in chapter 13.2c of your textbook, where we talk about this concept. And there's this figure that I think is helpful for defining a couple of terms. So the first term we want to be able to talk about is a conservative force. And, and so this is the idea of forces that do uh, path-independent work. Path-independent work. So if we look at our little figure over here, and we have the, the force acting along the solid line versus the force acting, say, the, the dotted path, we would say that it is a conservative force if it does exactly the same amount of work in both cases. And so some great examples of this would be gravity and linear springs. Because the, so for the gravity is the easy one to discuss. If we think about gravity, the weight is always pointed down and the tangential displacement is always going to be in that vertical direction. And therefore it doesn't matter how far side to side we move it as we move it between two elevations, it's gonna do the same amount of work. So that's an that's a example of a conservative force. Now the idea that conservation of energy takes is it takes that, that idea that we've already talked about that works equal to the change in kinetic energy and it thinks about generating something, an idea called potential energy. Potential energy in which we, we take the work due to energy, or sorry, the work due to the force, and we break it into two forces, or two different works, two different energies, based on a datum, okay? So the idea is that we could come up with a a position-based energy storage out of this. So position, position-based energy. So kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion. Position-based energy is associated with uh, just where it is. But the trick is that this requires a datum because what we're doing is we're breaking apart the work that we've talked about uh, previously into two pieces, kind of the initial potential energy and the final potential energy, the difference between those potential energies would be the work that we've defined previously. So this is to be compared. So this, this idea works great over here for conservative forces. Non-conservative forces, are path dependent. In the work that they do. So they're path dependent work. So if the force moved along the solid path versus the dotted path, it would do different amounts of work. Uh, the great example of that is friction. So as we move uh, along a path, if that path is longer, it means that friction acts for longer and we lose more energy. And so when we're thinking of this in terms of, of uh, mechanical behaviors, like we do in dynamics, we think of this as a mechanical 
energy loss. Okay, so a mechanical energy loss. So energy is going to leave the system through friction, and it's not really leaving the system, right? It's it's no longer mechanical energy. So often this energy is being lost to heat or vibration or noise. Um, in the case of generators, we're actually intentionally losing energy to create electricity. Um, there's all sorts of ways that we can lose that mechanical energy, such that uh, when we come up with our conservation of energy equation, we have to deal with that. So conservation of energy great concept and in fact it's one that we use a lot in uh, fluid dynamics but that's somebody else's class so you have that to look forward to uh, at some level conservation of energy basically takes our work energy equation where we said that the sum of the work uh, is equal to the change in kinetic energy and what we're going to do is we're going to break that sum of the work into its potential energy expressions. So this would be, and we're going to use the symbol V for potential energy. So it would be sum of the 2 minus sum of the 1 equal to delta T. So we've just broken that work into two pieces uh, based on that datum. And then if we think about delta T, that's really T2 minus T1. And so then we end up with T2 plus V2 is equal to T1 plus V1, like so. Okay, and this all, and actually I'm going to do it the other way around. We're going to go from 1 to 2. So sum of the V1s plus T1, so all the potential energy, all that position-based storage based on its datum, plus the kinetic energy is equal to the sum of V2 plus T2. So all the potential energy, data-based energy storage, plus the kinetic energy. Now, the only problem with this is that we're going to have these non-conservative forces that we have to deal with that break this system. And so we have to add them in as work where it loses. So the losses the work due to loss. So we have this whole thing. And so all this means is that when we have non-conservative forces, we're going to end up talking about work anyway. And so with that in mind, I think of the work energy equation as a far more, more robust form of the equation for dynamics than the conservation of energy equation. Because now we've got dy uh, datums going on. We've got to get our signs correct. As opposed to when we're doing work, we can just say, I need the 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 force and its tangential displacement, or the displacement and the tangential portion of the force, and I just have to ask, they're pointing in the same direction, I get positive work, they're pointing in opposite directions, I get negative work. I don't have to worry about a datum. And so we can use conservation of energy, and we might work a problem together, but we're always going to end up with this loss term over here that we have to be able to deal with. And if we're using our work energy equation, that loss term actually already shows up as negative work. Uh, in that equation. It's not hard for us to go ahead and capture it that way. All right, so that's conservation of energy in all of its glory. We're not going to do a whole lot with it, but you did need to see it. Uh, you're going to definitely use this form of the equation a lot in fluid mechanics, uh, where those losses are associated with roughnesses of pipes and bins and all sorts of fun things. But that's, again, outside the scope of this class. All right, thank you. Look forward to working problems with you in class. Bye.